Okay, so if you've taken any sort of algebra course or any uh, math course that involves algebra, this is a pretty typical type of problem that you're going to uh, need to uh, know how to solve. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about it right now. So in this particular problem, we have a train, and a train travels 100 miles in one hour and 20 minutes. So the question is, is how long in terms of hours, how much time in terms of hours will it take this train to uh, travel 460 miles. So this could be classified um, as a math word problem or an algebra word problem. And if I said, hey, we're going to do uh, algebra, an algebra word problem, most students get kind of panicked. I either get really um, sad, they're like, oh, I don't want to do it, or they'll get very angry. They'll be like, well, you know, I don't want to do a word problem. Just give me the nice, easy problems. Well, listen, word problems are nothing more than the application of math skills that you um, are learning. So remember, math is a tool. Your math skills are a tool to solve problems. So what is the point of learning mathematics if you're not gonna apply them to uh, actually solve real life problems? So this is a situation now, even if you don't know how to solve this problem, you know, stop and think about it uh, a little bit, you know, before you see me do this solution. Of course, if you know how to do this, put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer here in just one second. But uh, again, this is a pretty uh, typical, classic type of algebra uh, word problem that all of you out there studying algebra should know how to do. So we're going to get to exactly what to do in this particular problem. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to the conclusion, okay, over all those years, that all students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires great math instruction. You gotta be learning from a teacher that you really understand. So that's clear, understandable, and comprehensive math instruction. That's what you need to be successful in mathematics. So if you need help in your current math course or some sort of special test that you're studying for, maybe something like the GD, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, anything with math on it, or if you're homeschooling math, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, I'm gonna leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you should be taking your own awesome math notes. Uh, note taking is so important uh, when you're learning anything, not just math, any academic subject, subject you wanna be a great note taker. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you the solution uh, to the problem right now, and then we're gonna get into exactly how to solve this. All right, so here's our train. The train uh, took one hour and 20 minutes to go 100 miles. So 460 miles, how long will it take that train in terms of hours? Well, 6.13 hours, that is the correct answer. So, um, of course, um, you could, uh, this is kind of rounding off a bit of a decimal, but it should be your um, answer, your correct answer should be somewhere pretty much approximately uh, equal to 6.13. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this problem right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A++, because this is a word problem, a 100% and multiple stars from being so awesome at basic algebra word problems. So nice job. But if you are confused, well, stick around for a couple minutes. You're going to learn exactly what to do. Now, to solve this problem, we're going to need a formula. Okay, so that's one thing we're going to need to know. And kind of the, um, the main idea to solve this problem is uh, finding the speed of the train. Okay, so here we know how uh, long it took this train to go a particular um, distance, right? But we don't know the speed of the train. So that's gonna be a key component here. How do we find the speed or the rate of this train? Well, I'm gonna get into a second, but once we get into that in a second, but if we know the speed of the train, then we can easily calculate this part of the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this now. All right, so what do we know? What are the facts? Well, we know that this train took one hour and 20 minutes to cover 100 miles. Okay, great, but again, I wanna know the speed of the train, okay? What is the rate or the speed? Well, you wanna be familiar with this formula. All of you out there that are studying algebra need to know this formula right here, okay? Rate times time is equal to distance. Put this in your long-term memory, i.e., um, 
know this formula so well where you don't have to like look at a, a formula sheet to remember it. Okay, there's some formulas in mathematics that you just want to commit to your long-term memories. This is one of them. Okay, there's so many uh, motion or speed, rate and time problems. This is the formula that you need to know to solve all those problems. But let's go ahead and uh, talk about how to use this formula. And then, of course, we'll uh, circle back and actually apply it here. Okay, so rate times time equals distance. So let's talk about rate. Rate is effectively your speed, okay, a velocity. So if you're told like the velocity of something or the speed of something or the rate of something uh, or how fast something's going, that is your rate, okay? Now, time is, of course, time, all right? And then D is distance. But here's the key, okay? We have to be very, very uh, uh, concerned with our units of measure when we're using this formula, all right? So let's talk about distance. So here we're talking about miles in this particular problem, right? The train went 100 miles, or how long did it take the train to go 460 miles? So our unit of measure here for this particular problem is miles, okay? Not feet, not inches, it's miles. We're also talking about hours, okay? So when we're looking at our rate, our respective rate, we're gonna be thinking about miles per hour. Okay, miles per hour. So you're like, okay, hours and miles, miles per hour. Now, miles per hour, this is what we call a rate in mathematics. And effectively, this is miles uh, per one hour. Okay, how many miles do we go per one hour? Per one hour, that's miles per hour. Of course, we more uh, commonly write it this way. Now, I could solve for R here. Okay, let's actually do that now. Let's use some basic algebra. So here we have rate times time is equal to distance. If I solve for rate, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by T. Okay, so uh, just write, we can effectively rewrite this equation as R is equal to D divided by T. Okay, so why did I do that? Well, I want to really kind of emphasize units of measure here. So my rate is in miles per hour. And we could better see that here with this equation because my distance would be in miles and my time would be in hours. So that's miles per hour. So again, very, very important that you understand units of measure because this is typically uh, where students kind of would, um, you know, go wrong or make errors uh, with this particular formula. They might know the formula, but they're not using the correct units of measure. So again, that's why I'm really, really spending a lot of time to drive this point home. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this now. So my time has to be in all hours, okay? My distance has to be in all minutes. And so when I use this formula, I will be able to figure out the speed of the train in terms of miles per hour. But here's the deal, okay? I need all hours, but I do I have all hours here? No, I have one hour and 20 minutes. So I'm gonna have to fix this up so this time measurement is in all hours, okay? All hours, not hours and minutes. So that's our first task here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. So one hour and 20 minutes, how many hours is this? Not how many hours and minutes. Yeah, we have an hour here and 20 minutes here. So we're gonna have to figure out how much of an hour is 20 minutes, okay? Now, hopefully some of you can be like, well, 20 minutes is just one third of an hour because 20 out of 60. So if you were able to kind of reason that 20 minutes is uh, one third of an hour, that's excellent. But if you need more of a um, technical way to do this, you could set up a nice proportion. So let's go ahead and do, uh, take a look at this uh, right here. So 60 minutes is to one hour. Okay, there's one hour and 60 minutes. Now, what I'm doing here is a proportion, okay? And that's the same as 20 minutes is to how many hours, okay? So if you're not sure how to do this part of the problem, you want to go ahead and review proportions, okay? So we can set up a proportion. Again, 60 minutes is to one hour as 20 minutes is to how many hours? So what we can do now is simply use the cross product to solve this proportion. So X times 60 is 60X, one times 20 is 20, and I can solve for X, and X is going to be, its units of measure, it's gonna be hour, hours, so I get X is equal to 20 over 60, which of course, I can reduce to the fraction one third. Okay, so I now know that 20 minutes is one third of an hour, 
So one hour and 20 minutes is uh, one plus one third or one and one third hours. Okay. All right. So that's really our first uh, move to figure this thing out. Because when I'm looking at this formula, my first thing is, okay, great. I want to use the formula, but I got to first think about these units of measure. So now my time is in all hours. Okay. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the problem this way. All right, so here's our train. It uh, went 100 miles. And how uh, long? Well, now it went uh, in one and one third hours. We know it's an hour and 20 minutes, but now we have all miles and all hours. So I can figure out the rate or the speed of this train in terms of miles per hour. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's use the formula, rate times times equal to distance. So what is the time? Okay, well, the time is one and one third hours. Okay, so I'm gonna replace that T with the one and one third. And what is the distance? It's 100 miles, right? 100 miles. So I wanna go ahead and solve for R, right? Now, the easiest way to do this algebraically is to change this mixed number fraction into an improper fraction. So three times one is three plus one is four. So this is the same thing as four third times R is equal to 100. So to solve this basic algebra equation, Easiest thing to do is to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal, okay? You could divide both sides of the equation by four thirds. It's the same thing as multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal. So again, if you're confused about this part right here, what I'm doing, you need to solve or you need to review basic equations. So uh, remember, this is an algebra word problem where we're applying math skills that you should already know. So if you're lost, you, you probably need to, um, review basic equations, proportions, etc. All right, so, but if you understand this, we can solve for R, to simply multiply both sides of the equation by three fourths, and uh, let's take a look at the answer. All right, so R is gonna be equal to, this is a fraction right here, 300 over four. 300 divided by four is 75, but again, we're thinking about units of measure. So the rate is 75 miles per hour. Okay, that's how fast, our train is going. Okay, so now that we know uh, how quick or how fast this train is going, the rate of the train, this train's going 75 miles per hour. Okay, how long does it, um, how long will a train going 75 miles an hour take uh, to cover 460 miles? Well, uh, this here, it's gonna be nice and easy because this units of measure is in miles. And here uh, we have miles per hour. So when we use, the rate times time equals distance formula, our answer is going to be in hours, and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So rate times time is equal to distance. We know the rate, okay? The rate is 75 or 75 miles per hour. T is what we're looking for, right? And this is going to be in hours because this is miles per hour and our distance is in miles. And so this is already set up nice and easily for us or nice uh, and correct because we already did the work up front. So to solve for t, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 75. So that's going to be 460 divided by 75, which is 6.13. And again, you need to understand what, what is the unit of measure. That's in hours. And that's what we were looking for. So there you go. Okay. All right. So probably this uh, problem, okay, I would say for a lot of you, probably the, the point that... Um, you need to work on. Well, it's actually going to be a couple things. So the first thing I would strongly suggest you um, make sure you understand is working with units of measure. When you're working with particular formulas, uh, any formula, okay, physics, math, doesn't make a difference. You want to be thinking about units of measure and how to convert one unit to another, right? And of course, I can't explain all these things in this one uh, video, I'm just kind of highlighting the different skills that you need to be aware of. So that's the first one. The second thing is you need to um, know how to solve equations, okay? Various equations and uh, solve for specified um, variables in a particular formula as well. So if you need additional help uh, with these basic kind of algebra word problems, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and point you towards my Algebra One course in my math help program. Of course, I cover word problems in my pre-algebra course as well. Uh, algebra One, Algebra Two, all my math courses, you'll uh, see uh, word problems. And I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.